everyone. Happy Wednesday evening. Welcome to Stampin' Up! with Jamie. Thank you so much. You might be catching this on the replay over on YouTube or wherever. Thank you so much for watching. Wherever, whenever you're watching from, I appreciate it. Um, as you're coming in, please uh, let me know that you're here and um, where you're watching from. Karen's here. Good evening. Listen, here's the thing, guys. I know you see my phone. I got to figure out a setup here where you don't see my phone. So I apologize for that. I will get this whole... I somehow need to get this in front of me. I need a bigger desk. <laughs> Hello, Catherine's here. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am super happy to be here with you tonight. My name is Jamie. I'm in upstate New York here. I am a Stampin' Up! Uh, independent demonstrator for six years now. I just realized I need to close these down. There we go. And uh, I love sharing just my projects. And usually they're very clean, simple, not a whole heck of a lot going on. That's kind of my jam. Uh, tonight I have a fun fold for you, though, and it's so out of character. It is so out of character. I don't do fun folds. I just don't. I I keep it usually very um, quick, simple. That's that's my thing. But every now and then I like to switch things up and kind of share something new and different with you. Um, so continue to come on in. Let's see who's here. Jones here. Kathy. Oh, let's see here. Hildenel, is that how you pronounce it? I apologize if I butchered that. Lynette, hello, Lynette. Um, but when we see, but what we can see, we know. <laughs> um, Trina's here. Heather, hello, everyone. Fun folds are fun, Lynette. They really are. And um, my downline, Karen, you have to go follow her over on Facebook, Creative Stamping Designs. She does a fun fold tutorial every Wednesday faithfully and sometimes they're a little more simpler and other times they're really really intricate and she's just amazing at them um i just i don't know oh good um i just don't tend to do them very often but um i don't um uh, i guess i could she could go get them. well i was gonna bring over the card that was my inspiration for the card today i kind of took it as sort of the, the baseline of which to kind of build off of and design today's card. All this week, I'm using the Artfully Layered uh, bundle in your mini catalog. So if you are looking for it, grab your mini catalog. It is on, you know, I had it opened and then I closed it. What was the point of opening it just to close it? I don't know. Let's see here. There we are. Page 32, 33, and 34. Okay, so your first page here, you're going to see the whole suite. The suite is called Artfully Composed. The suite itself has its own uh, product number. So if you're literally like, I want one of everything, you can use that number and it will get you literally one of everything. Um, what the suite includes, that will be in the opposite page here. I know you're getting big glares off my huge lamps. Um, and then on page 34, you just see the stamp set with more inspiration. If you are looking for like, I have this product, I'm not quite sure what to do with it, go to the catalog. I do that more often than not. And just kind of see what Stampin' Up! is using and doing and inspiring, all that fun stuff. Funny enough, the vellum layering designs is included in the suite. And I didn't use it in that one of my cards this week. And it's probably one of my favorite products in the whole mini catalog. I guess I didn't realize it was part of this suite or I would have used it. It's beautiful. I guess I'll have to just feature it all on its own one week. It's so fun. It's probably my favorite product in the whole mini catalog. Um, okay, so good thing to know is the Artfully Layered Bundle is $53, okay? So if you want to get the bundle, $53 here in North America will qualify you for a level one celebration item. Celebration's going on like two and a half more weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, it's a great opportunity to earn free product. It's an amazing time to join and become a demonstrator. Never any pressure to sell or do parties. It's just celebrations, basically the best time of the year. I mean, let's face it, right? So who else is here? Beth, Roz. Oh, is it? I always want to say Avenel, but it might be Avenel. Val's here. Christy's here. Hello, my friends. I'm going to take a swig of water and then we're going to dive in. Hello, Pam. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Listen, if you're watching and um, even on replay and you're like, yeah, I kind of like what she's doing, 
please hit the heart button for me. Like my page. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, be sure to like the channel. Just makes me all, give me all sorts of warm and fuzzies. <laughs> so um, here's tonight's card. Let me do a little this. There we go. Okay. This is the card. And let me kind of walk you through my th thought process and where I went and how I got to this spot. Okay. It originally wasn't a fun fold. I mean, I guess it kind of was, but originally the card was just this. I didn't have the other component to it. It literally was just this cut on an angle and then open it up and see the designer paper. And I was like, well, where are we going to like write the message? And I'm like, well, I guess we could do it like over here, which would totally work. Okay. So if you're not looking for the extra flip in the fun, the extra fold in the fun. Okay. You can leave it just like this as a regular card and have just a simple flap cut on an angle with designer paper and then leave your writing over here. It would work. Okay. But then I'm like, I kind of want to just like, I don't know, could it work? And so then I was like, heck yeah, we're going to try. And I added the other element to it. Um, I will say it does make for a thicker card. You'll see it doesn't lay flat because it does have that cardstock butt right up to it. So you know, if you wanted to lay flat, you could do like a belly band with it. You could tie a ribbon around it to hold it tight. I don't know. I kind of like that. It's kind of flapping in the wind and it has a simple stamp on the inside. Excuse me. I have an eyelash in my eye and um, a place for you to write your sentiment. So, oh, thanks, Kay. Appreciate it. Oh, it's all the tropical, Christy, all this week. And I took, except for yesterday's card, uh, my color inspiration is right from the designer series paper, which is gorgeous. Oh, I put it away. Hold on. Oof. There we go. So the designer paper, you're going to, I like cut into it. This is the pattern, my main pattern. The flip side is this kind of, it almost looks like the matrix to me. <laughs> Have any of you seen the matrix? Doesn't it look like, I mean, obviously the matrix is like black and white, but it looks kind of like the matrix. <laughs> I love the pattern. I love, love, love this pattern. So let's dive in. I'm going to give you measurements as I go because I didn't write them down ahead of time. Except for one. I did write down one. So let's dive in. You're going to need a whole bunch of different cardstock. Again, you could leave it as just the one flop, flap, <laughs> flap flap um but so you know depending on if you want it a little simpler you could definitely go that route or keep it a little bit more on the complex side okay basic white thick basic white is my uh card base here okay this is five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter i've said it a bajillion times if you're using basic white as your card base basically on which everything else is being kind of layered on then i would highly suggest using the thick basic white it has just a nice um it stands up beautifully it won't implode on you it'll really hold up well Hello, Sonia. Oh, my Montreal friend. <laughs> um, okay. So this is where the fun part comes in. Okay. So you're going to see my card flap here is cut on an angle, right? Well, how did I do that? If you know me, I keep things simple. Like, I'm generally not going to do anything overly complicated. So if that's kind of your jam, we're going to do this. Okay. So you're going to need a pencil or something to kind of mark. If I'm really lazy and can't find a pencil, you know what I do? This is so bad. I take the like really pointed end of my take your pick tool and I just kind of like scratch a notch in it. <laughs> if I can't find a pencil, that's how I mark it. And that's probably what I did for my sample card, to be honest. Okay. What we're going to do is measure an inch in from the bottom right hand corner and then an inch in from the top left-hand corner. Now, I'm off. My measuring is going to be off screen. Let's see if I can move. If I move this, it's going to totally everything. I can't move it, okay? <laughs> Sorry. If I move my camera, everything else is falling because my, like, lamp is leaning on it. My computer is leaning on my lamp. It would just be bad. So let me, let me measure it, and then I'll show you my measure marks. So one inch in, give it a little mark, and then one inch in and give it a little mark. Oops, hold on. Hold on, let me try that again. One inch in, my pencil slid. There we go, okay. So, one inch in, got a mark. One inch in, got a mark. And what we're going to use, hello Jillian and Susan's here. Everybody's showing up tonight. I love it. 
love it, love it. I miss you guys on Tuesday over on YouTube. By the way, I, I've had people ask, and um, Tuesday afternoons, I am now out of my house working. So um, for now, hopefully it's kind of a short-term thing, but for now, my YouTube lives on Tuesday are canceled. <sighs> Believe me, I would much rather be here crafting with you guys, but such as life. Okay. So I have my trimmer and what I'm going, I apologize. You're getting a glare. Let's see. Can I sit? Oh, I can sit in front of it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put in your trimmer, which it needs a little cleaning. I have a piece of cardstock in there. You have this kind of groove, right? I can actually slide my, my scissors in it. It's where the blade kind of rolls, right? So I'm going to put my one notch in the top of the groove. Then I'm going to swing the bottom or vice versa. Start at the bottom and swing the top. Doesn't matter. Swing my bottom so that that notch is in that groove. So both the one inch marks should be in that groove where my blade is going to run. Okay. So let me just double check. Put my thing down. I see one there. I see one there. And we're just going to go like that. <laughs> now, this is a perfectly good piece. Don't throw this away. You can find some purpose for it somewhere. And that's how we get our angle. Now, if you want it more angled, just go more than an inch. I mean, you could, or you don't even have to measure it, really. You could, honest to goodness, just kind of eyeball it. Um, but for the sake of giving you guys measurements, I thought we would measure it out. And then you use a pencil because then you can just erase the marks and no harm done. Oh, hello, Shirley. Good evening. All my Canadian friends are showing up tonight. <laughs> Okie dokie. So we have our flap. Again, if you didn't want to make it a double flap, a double fold, what's the terminology? Where is Karen here? What's the terminology? I don't, this is why I don't do fun folds. I know you're shocked that I don't know the words or the terminology, but the flaps, right? They're flaps. So if you didn't want to have it the double opening, you can leave it just as is and have fun with it that way. Okay. What do I want to do next? I want to do lots of things next. Um, okay, let's do our 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 um our polka dots. Oh, they're so fun. So they have this flat, this uh, piece of hold on. <laughs> Let me start over. We have this DSP that's on that angled card front, okay? Now, this is going to measure, this is where I did take a note. This is three by five and a quarter. Three by five and a quarter. So the three is like the perfect width that we need, and then we're going to also cut it at an angle. And what we're going to do is, oops, from the left, top left-hand corner, <laughs> that's okay, Amy. We're going to measure seven eighths of an inch. Oh, but backwards. We got to do it backwards or else if we cut it, hold on, right? If we cut it, hold on. I have my cheat sheet. <laughs> hold on. I did a cheat sheet before. Um, well, I guess we could do seven eighths then and just cut it. Yeah. Forget what I'm saying. We're going to measure seven eighths in. So I'm going to make sure it's lined up. Double check, seven eighths, give it a little notch. Yeah, we're good. If I mess this up, we're just gonna cut another piece. <laughs> so there's my mark, seven eighths, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing we did for our card front, except this time, we're gonna put that seven eighths line in the notch, and we're gonna put the very tippy corner of the bottom in. Okay, so I'm going from the 7 eighths mark, I'm going to come down to the very bottom right-hand corner of my DSP. In theory, in theory, this should work. <laughs> I did try it out before I went live. Do you guys have, um, so like anytime I'm working on like a fun fold or any kind of sort of scrap cardstock, you know what color I always use? so bad. This poor cardstock only gets used when I need a scrap. Any ideas? You might think it's a yellow. It's actually not a yellow because I do use a yellow. But anytime I need a scrap piece of cardstock, I use basic gray. Isn't that so bad? I hardly ever use basic gray. And so I'm like, well, it's just sitting there. I might as well use it. <laughs> poor great basic gray only gets used when I need to make basic like <laughs> trial and error on it. Anyways, so that will be, that fits it perfectly. I'm trying to see that. 
Ta-da! I am not good at measurements. I am not good at figuring out the math of this stuff. So the fact that that worked, I was actually really proud. I was like, whoa, that worked. Pacific Point is your go-to scrap. Oh my goodness, Amy, that is funny. I have used Pacific Point. Yeah, that's a color I rarely use as well. Yep. Isn't that so funny? Anybody else have like a scrap go-to color? I would say a retired color, but I sell all my retired colors. So I just, I don't have cardstock sitting around or else that probably would be my go-to. Okay. So a little um, adhesive goes a long way <laughs> for real. Uh, just going to adhere that to the card front. Pumpkin pie. Yeah. That's another color. I don't use a whole heck of a lot. I use that like for the fall, right? Pumpkins and whatnot. Sahara sand. Really? I use this hot green cheapy stuff. <laughs> well, so in the past I would use like um, copy paper, right? Cause it's cheaper. But if you're doing um, like a fun fold, I remember one time I was trying to do like a belly band, but copy paper's thinner. And so I got like all the measurements figured out. And then when I converted it to cardstock, it didn't work because cardstock's thicker. So now I just stick with basic gray. Surely you use your white. See, white is like gold to me. It's like the price of gold. I don't know. I use I use white a lot. You have to use a color that you don't like or that you don't use a lot. That's my two cents. <laughs> Does it really matter? No. Okie dokie. So you're going to need a scrap piece. Not a scrap because we're going to use it. Um, a piece of evening evergreen. Okay. I'm going to, we're going to cut an edge and this, oh, the scraps. That makes sense. And we're just going to give a nice edge to this to kind of make it pop against that designer series paper. You need one, you may think that you only need it five and a half inches, but that's not true because it's an angle. So you need it, well, I can tell you about how long it needs to be. I guess six and a quarter, I could trim mine. I was just gonna cut this whole big thing, but we can kind of get it closer to where it needs to be. Six and a half. And then we're going to use the amazing dies that I put them away. Oh, that's not them. Hold on. I think I put them away. Oh, I, hold on. <laughs> oh my goodness. There they are. I did put them away. Whoo. I got a little nervous for a second. <laughs> Yours is garden green. Oh my goodness. That's so funny. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Jillian. That makes sense. Um, what was I going to say? What, what live did I do? And I could not find the stamp set. I could not find the stamp set anywhere. And I forgot to like pull it ahead of time. And I'm like, oh, I must have moved my thing. I'm like, um, let me go get the stamp set. And I turned around and it's like not there. And I'm like looking, yeah, playing it all cool. Like I got this. It's here somewhere. Could not find the stamp set. Come to find out I had put it back. I keep mine alphabetical and I had put it back, not alphabetical. So anyways, okay. This die here is amazing. We're going to use it and then I'll just give you a closer look at how just about how amazing it is. So this is about an inch by about six and a quarter, six and a half. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine over here. Oops. Donna, you're here. Yay. Happy hump day. I don't know why I have it in my head to, that today is Thursday. I know it's not Thursday. I mean, I'm here with you, but it just feels like a Thursday. You know what I mean? Okay. So this is what you have. Now let's see. Can I get the light? Come on. Focus. It's got this nice stitch. I can't. There we go. See the stitch? It's got a nice stitch edge to it. And this is way bigger than we need it to. But I always find it's kind of easier to cut big and then trim down. People may say that's wasting, but honestly, it's what works for me. Someone asked me on you on Instagram. They said, why do you stamp first and then cut? And I don't know. It's just what works for me. And so, you know, rule number one when paper crafting is kind of finding what works for you and sticking with it. <laughs> Deborah, are you in the South Pacific, Deborah? <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that right there and then trim. Okay. So it's obviously going to be way longer than I need and that's okay. I rather have it too long than worry about trimming it and then having it be too short. So I'm going to put a thin, <laughs> thin being the operative word along my edge here around on the back. It's easier to put it on the basic white than to put it. Oh, come on, you silly thing. 
<laughs> here in Australia, than um, to put it on the evening evergreen. So we're going to put the liquid glue on my edge. And the nice thing about liquid glue is it's going to give me a little time to wiggle it around a little bit. I want it to go just underneath. Oh, gravy. I smeared it big time. <laughs> it's okay. I want it to go just under the stitch. Like I want the stitch to show through. That's okay, Michelle. No problem. Give it a good smear. Like you're putting on some peanut butter. <laughs> Gotta put some peanut butter on. And then I'm going to follow the bottom and top of the basic white and give it a, a haircut. Oop. I'm gonna go out. Well, I'll go about it this way, I guess. Listen, I can fussy cut till I'm, you know, I love to fussy cut. <laughs> you know that. Cutting straight lines is a lot harder. <laughs> like, no kidding. Give me your intricate things any day of the week. Straight lines, whole nother story. Okay. So we have that beautiful, isn't that so fun? I love that. And you know what? There's nothing tropical about this dye. I mean, it's meant for that sweet, but you could use this on any card. It is unbelievable, unbelievably versatile. Um, you could use it to give an edge here. You could do a straight edge, um, like up and down. You could do a bottom edge. You could do just about any edge you'd like. So versatile, so much fun. Love the stitch. And I love that it's a zigzag. You know, it's not a scallop. It's a zigzag. It's something different. Okay. Let's work on the inside for a moment. I have a panel of evening evergreen. This is four by four. Hold on a second. I'm not going to say that right. It is five. I wasn't. It's five and a quarter by eight scored at four. Okay. And this is what's going to go on the inside here. It's going to be sort of the second opening. Boop. Boop. And let's see here. What am I going to do? What am I doing again? Can someone remind me? <laughs> on the front here, we're going to put a, this pattern. I think it may be one of my favorite patterns from that artfully composed designer series paper. I am almost, I just had to order more adhesive. I'm afraid I'm going to run out. I'm running low. Okay. So this is going to go there. Again, it's opening like this, right? So just make sure you're getting the right orientation that it's, you don't want to do it like this. Well, you know what I mean? Like envision how it's going to open and make sure you adhere, adhere it accordingly so that you get it in the right orientation, the right direction. I had that same um, polka dot image. I love it so much. I just had to use it again. And this one's gonna go on the inside flap. Again, four, these are four by five and a quarter. No, these aren't, don't do not do what I just said. They are three and seven eighths by five and a eighth. <laughs> Should I give it to you again? I'm so sorry. This evening evergreen is five and a quarter by eight scored at four. The two designer series paper are three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Okay. Now that I've just royally confused everyone, I apologize. When I do any matting, if you're ever wondering like a measurement of matting, I always do one eighth, well, bigger or smaller, depending on, you know, the mat is one eighth bigger than whatever I'm matting on it. I'm a very like faithful one eighth matter. I mean, I, I like that look and I stick to it. <laughs> I do not budge. It's like when you go to a favorite restaurant, you order what you always like because you know you're going to like, you know, like it. Same thing. Why change it if it works? You have to find the ones you lost. Heather, don't even. Heather, I, I don't know where they are. I. It has been a full year since that original. So that retreat was in 2020. Yeah, 2020, because I went back this year and I couldn't find them. So like the box of like a dozen adhesives are still missing. I have no idea where they are. So frustrating. It's a very Jamie thing though. If you ask my friends and family, I, I just, I lose things. I notoriously lose things. It's, it's just bad. It's bad. Um, okay, so I have a panel of basic white. This is the same measurement as the DSP. So three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And I'm going to stamp. Oh, let me show you the stamp set. Here's the stamp set. 
Um, I'm going to stamp this guy here. It's like a distinctive look. So it's really kind of cool. The different kind of hues and variations of the color that we can get. I love the sentiments. They basically have almost all the bases covered. You have a birthday, a thank you, and a couple of just because like this is my jam. I love it. If you are looking for fun, bright, tropical, just this is a, such an amazing um, suite of products. So just Jade. I don't know where those ones are, Heather. They're gone. I feel like I just need to accept it and move on. I'm sorry. You're getting a glare from my outline. I feel like this is not, is that good? Oh, I guess we were good. It didn't look like it was good. Okay. Bottom right hand corner, kind of at an angle, I guess. Give it a little smudge. Gorgeous. I love Just Jade. It's going to be retiring though. Is anyone as sad as I am? So if you're just getting to know, um, I don't know why I'm bothering to put that away right now. Stampin' Up! Every year in the new annual catalog, Stampin' Up! introduces five what they call in colors and the in colors are around for two years after the two years they retire and each year we get a, a new five colors so um come uh may we'll get new five colors five new colors and the 20 hold on the 2019 no is that right no that's not right the 2020 2022 colors will retire Wow, that was so much math. I had to like stop what I was doing and really focus on what years it would be. Um, so that is, what is it? Just Jade, Misty Moonlight. I love Misty Moonlight. Um, Magenta Madness. Um, what are they? Magenta Madness, Just Jade, Misty Moonlight. Why am I drawing a complete blank? Okay, anyways, and two others that I can't think of which ones they are. This is going to go on the opposite side flap. This is really going to bother me. There is an adhesive thief, Amy. I'm convinced. Either that or they literally grew legs and walked off because I certainly didn't lose them. <laughs> I know. Oh, cinnamon cider. Yes, that's another one. Bumblebee. Guys, and I'm sitting here looking at them going, uh... <laughs> So let's see here. Magenta, I pulled on Magenta Madness, Bumblebee. What is it? Oh, Cinnamon Cider. Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Just Jade and Misty Moonlight. If you love these colors, now is a great time to stock up during celebration because in just a couple of months, they're going to be retired. And without a doubt, without fail, happens every single year. We know they're retiring, and I still get emails. Oh, I really need Misty Moonlight. Do you happen to have an extra pack? And I'm like, I'm sorry. So please, 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 please. Now do yourself the favor and stock up on refills, cardstock, ink pads if you don't have them. Because once they retire, they're like gone for good. Okay. And celebration is a great time to do it because you earn free product. Okay. So we have basically one. We basically have two cards. We've created two separate cards and we're going to just marry them we're gonna make them friends um do i want to use liquid glue i feel like i want to use liquid glue just so i have a little bit of wiggle room we'll make x marks the spot <laughs> okay we're just gonna adhere one inside the other yep we're good we are good to go Nice thing about liquid glue is it gives you a little enough time to kind of wiggle it around and make sure you get the placement you want, but it doesn't take forever to dry. Like it'll set within a few moments. Okay. Oh, how fun is this? I'm sorry. This is just way too fun. The only thing that if someone can figure out, it doesn't want to lay flat. It, it will be a little flappy. I don't mind it though. Okay. So ahead of time, now we're going to do sort of the outside here and I forgot to get my circles um ahead of time i use the same what in the world are they called i don't even know tropical layers dies ready for a hot mess well there you go <laughs> they all fall out i have used these a time or two we use these in stamp camp they got well loved then and i've been using them all week um i didn't feature again i don't know why but they have these actually i used it on instagram the, the other day these sort of um like embossing dies, they make a great impression. 
didn't use them. I'm not sure why I should have used them. Okay, I cut out, this is Just Jade cardstock. I cut it out ahead of time, but I'm going to very gently pop it out because I want, I don't know where my trash is. I want some, not all, where'd my take your pick to? Oh boy. <laughs> there it is. I want some of these little bits to stay in it and some of them not. So like, let's take that one out and let's take that one out. And for some reason with this die in particular, they kind of stay put. Um, some of these sort of negatives, as long as you're not, you know, too rough with them, they will stay put. I forgot to grab a piece of, Ooh, this will probably be big enough. Is that big enough? Yeah, it's big enough. Okay. We're going to stamp the sentiment. Hey there in evening evergreen. This is a color flappy, floppy, fun fold. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, this is such a Jamie moment. I forgot what I was going to say. Gravy, gravy. Oh, evening evergreen. Now there's a color. I will be so upset when it retires. Luckily, we have a whole other year with it. It is probably one of my favorite um, in colors that's been introduced. I just, I feel like we don't have anything like evening evergreen. It's such a rich, deep, almost black, but like green I love it for Christmas cards, for all year round cards, for every kind of card. It is probably, I just hope they do a color refresh beforehand and leave it around because oh, I'll be so sad when we don't have that one anymore. Okay, let me get my circle. Oh, that's rectangles. My circles. Okie dokie. Okie dokie smokey. I don't even know what size I use. Let's see if we can figure it out. Whoa, these are... I actually it might be this one. Is this it? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Look how well loved this is. This is pathetic. Like why I still even bother keeping it like with this plastic. I have no idea. It's ridiculous. Like, why do I even have this? It's not. <laughs> oh, we should have a contest. Although probably most of you are really organized and yours don't look like that. But how rough do your, what's the dye? What's the die case that looks the roughest? Okay, anyways, so this is a circle. It's about two inches or so. I'm gonna off camera here, cut it out with that circle. Oh, it's so fun, Catherine. You're gonna love it. It's just bright. It makes me happy to use. And I love that we can kind of keep it like these earthy green tones, but then like totally go outside of them and like magenta madness, right? Like really do fun. I just love it so, so much. Okie dokie. So before I started tearing anything down, I kind of want to get an idea of placement. So we're going to say that's going to go about here. I don't want to go too far less because then you run into issues with mailing and I really like my cards to fit in the envelope. So I'm going to kind of make sure it's it's on the flap. And then let's see what I did. I kind of went. Yeah. OK, just to kind of get an idea of placement. So why don't you have magnetic sheets? I don't know, Catherine. I don't know. I don't know. I. It's an investment, right? It's an investment. And I just haven't. I just haven't. And I keep. Actually, at my team meeting last night, yes, last night, Tuesday night, we were talking about magnetic sheets. We were kind of talking about organization a little bit and kind of seeing everybody's setup and what they do. And, um, yeah, a lot of them use the magnetic sheets. And uh, one of them was saying how she keeps them, like, in her stamp set. Like, it makes complete sense. And it's just an investment and I'd rather buy more stamps. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. Like, like a magnetic sheet just isn't as fun as a new stamp set. <laughs> I do though. I need to because I need to. I think I deserve it too, quite honestly. Okay, so there's our leaf. I don't know what we're going to call that. What is that? That's a leaf, our tropical leaf. I use, yes, that's what they were saying, Kathy. Yes, two of the ladies were saying that they use the magnetic register covers that I found at Lowe's. Yeah. How does everybody know this except me? I like repeat, I'm like, she was telling me, I'm like, bed covers? She's like, yeah. And the, another lady was like, yeah, bed I'm like, bed covers? Where have I been that I don't even know about this? Bed covers. Oh, really, Shirley? Interesting. 
our dollar store next to us isn't that good. So it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't have it. Okay, so let's put our sentiment on. Hey there. I love a hey there because you could do hey there on the outside. Happy birthday on the inside. Hey there on the outside. Congratulations on the inside. You can really make anything a hate with hey there. I think it's so versatile. Sorry, I'm trying to find my little faux sea glasses. How do you pluralize glass? Glasses? No, just faux glass. Faux sea glass. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long day. What a day. Oh my goodness. What a day. <clears throat> okay. Love the faux sea glass. I'm going to use this one here, which I don't think is technic. Actually, that may be just Jade. Let's see what the mini catalog calls that color. Where is it? <laughs> there it is. Uh, number three. Oh, it's, they call it old olive. Oh no, just Jade. Just Jade, old olive and white. So it is just Jade. Okay. This one's the old olive one. Amazon sells four by six sheets that fit inside the plastic folder. I feel like I've been out of the loop. Hey, Denise. So glad to see you here tonight. I feel like everybody was in on the inside joke and inside scoop and I missed it. I, like vent covers. I know people use magnetic sheets and I think it's brilliant, but I did not know anything about magnetic, about vent covers. Um, I'm adding these around. They're super fun. They're, um, have the adhesive already on them. I don't like it there. Um, <clears throat> It's just really different, different shapes and just add a nice depth to it. Okay. So flap number one, flap number two, and flap number three. Now, if you really want to go like, whoa, berserk, <laughs> you could, so this is my scrap that I was using. You could do one of those on the back. You could like go completely wild. <laughs> you may want to go like a little wider to just kind of cover that, that edge a little bit, but you could totally do that if you wanted to. Okay. Let's get a uh, doodah for this. And by doodah, I mean envelope. Oh my gosh. Look at this. The last one. It's like it was meant to be. Um, What pattern? I think we should use the dot. I don't know. Which one should we use? Should we use this one or the dots? Or, hold on, hold on. Door number three. We could use that. It's not quite as fun. Ten four by six sheets. Interesting. I'll have to go look at it. Um, I feel like this one's not quite tropically fun enough. That's okay, Denise. Happy to have you here. I think we're going to go this one. You're not going to see a whole heck of it, but I feel like because the, the polka dots is like a lot of white, it's not going to pop enough. So two and a quarter. Naturally, I forgot to do this ahead of time. Two and a quarter by six is the flap size. And we're going to do a little liquid glue and then call it a night. Please drop any comments. I mean, any questions in the comments. If you've been watching and have yet to leave a comment, quickly do so. Um, at the end of all my Facebook lives on Wednesday night, if you catch it live, I throw all your names um, into a hat. And uh, one lucky winner wins the card. But the only way I know you're watching is if you leave a comment or an emoji. You don't even have to say anything. So... Make sure you leave a comment so I can catch your name when I do the drawing at the end. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. I love to answer questions to help. Um, even if you are a fellow demonstrator or you have you order from someone else, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. I truly want, even if you never buy a thing from me, never join my team, I want you to have um, a successful paper crafting experience. And if I can help in some small um, form, way I want to. So don't ever hesitate. Head over to jamieb.com and you can place your order. Um, right now during celebration, you will earn free product with it. So that's always a nice little perk. 
Um, <laughs> that's the only thing is I can only mail to um, within residents of the United States. So sorry, all my Australian and Canadian friends. I send you love and hugs and kisses, but can't mail you my card. <laughs> oh, thanks, Shanda. Thank you, everyone. That's the end of it. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions. Head over to Jamie B um, to get my free five quick and easy card tutorials and all my goodness is over there. And I'll be back next week, same time, same place. And I hope to see you then. Thank you, everyone, for joining me tonight. And I hope to see you next week. Toodles. Bye.